Welcome everyone to this webinar on getting started with Alpify Monitor. My name is Michael and I'll help moderate this webinar. Today's presenter is Ken Dobbins, who's an experienced network engineer and system administrator. Ken loves to work with Juniper products and VMware NSX, but as all people with operation experience, he has worked with a wide range of technologies. Ken will show you how to get started with OP5 Monitor by giving a live demo, including how to easily add monitoring of Microsoft, Juniper, and Linux devices using OP5's management packs. Before we get started, some housekeeping rules. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation to answer any questions you might have. You can send your questions in the chat window in the left part of your any meeting screen. If you have maximized any meeting, you might have to click the icon with four arrows to make the chat window visible again. A recording of the entire webinar will be made available. You are welcome to share the recording with your colleagues. That's it from me. Uh, are you ready, Ken? Yes, Michael, I am. All right. Good afternoon. Then, uh, take it away. Good afternoon, morning, or day to whoever's here. Uh, I would like to welcome you. And today we're going to go over a bit of the getting started with OP5. From here, this is a fresh install of OP5. At this point, the only thing I have done has gone through the initial login and created my user. So by default, out of the box, you come with one host, your monitoring server. Let's add another one. So my first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Windows server. I'm going to go through, select my host wizard. This is the display page that gives you the example of, and explains kind of what you're going to be covering here. But we'll click next. And the next step is, is to scroll down. And we're going to find a Windows server. Right there. And we're going to select it. Now we're going to name it. Here, give it the IP. You can also use a host name in this place. For this instance, we're going to use just the IP. At this point, it is automatically added in some very basic checks that it's going to use. Within five minutes, it's going to start populating this. However, we're going to go ahead and force the check. So I'm going to select everything. And then right here under the find box, you have this little double arrow checkbox. You're going to select it. it. Gives you a bunch of options of what you can do with your selected services. We're going to select check now. It should be under the actions window. It'll give you a list of the services that it's going to actually check now. And we're going to hit submit. It says it has been submitted and our checks have been completed. Coming back, there we go. Well, we got one error. It didn't like the status of one of the auto starts, but that's that's OK. It's not going to kill us here. So next, we are going to add a Linux machine. OK, we're coming back to the same screen here. Now, once you get used to this, you can check here and it'll make this first step introduction go away. And you'll come straight here. So next we're going to select a Linux machine. Linux server. Now you notice that I'm selecting this. I'm using the actual agent installed. So we were going to call this. And then we're going to go. We're going to save and submit. All right. 
So here we go. We're going to go through the same process again. We're going to check our action screen, check now, and submit it. And done. And there we go. At this point, we can come into our list view and view all of our hosts. It's going to give us three of them total. Okay. Let's actually take a look at a different list view. We're going to go services. Here we have all of our available services. As you can see by default within the monitor management pack, the, the management pack designed specifically for monitoring OP5. We have some legacy hardware devices here. That's okay, you can remove those if they don't apply to you, which just there is an example of the kind of things that you are capable of monitoring with within the platform. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our dashboard. So we have all of this data, but how do we find what we want? So let's come to the dashboard. Here is what you see when you first log in to OP5. So you have this big getting started thing. And it gives you a really good overview of what you can cover, but we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. So now we're up to our big number displays. But what can we do with it? So let's create a widget here. We're gonna create a list. So we're gonna create a list view here. Leave it this wide. but. How do we create this filter? This filter is very easy to create using, I'm going to duplicate this tab, and I'm going to show you how to create the actual list. So let's say we want to create a services. Here we have all of our services. And we want to filter this down to what we want to display on our front page. So. Graphical input of services. We're going to add a rule here. This, so let's see here. Let's find one. Oh, button. State equals, we'll say not equals, okay. So as you see here, it has generated an actual filter for you. With this, you can highlight it, copy it, and come over here and insert it directly into your widget. Now, I did a very basic one. We, we, we came through and said, give us the services that are not green. We're going to label it not OK. We're going to save it. At this point, this widget will automatically generate everything you're seeing that's not OK. So you have a single point of view to view exactly what you're trying to see. You can also rearrange, and all those big numbers, they're kind of hard to see. So we're gonna rearrange this this way. And now it's inverted and it gives us a really good top-down view of what we're trying to see. The next thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna add another device into it, okay? And we're gonna just see how well it changes everything that's on this display. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get together my details here, come here to uh, manage host wizard. Something just dawned on me. I don't have my management pack handy on my new demo. One second. Uh, 
I just have to download it off of my existing demo. I apologize. I'm going to cancel this. This will also show you just how easy it is to move these management packs between as you create one. Come here, manage, configure, management packs. You can import management packs available that, that you create, you create, that your associates create, or even available online. Now at this point, my management pack is available. We're going to go ahead and save. I have a lot of changes I've made. That's one of the great things about OP5 also is, is it has a double save feature. It gives you the ability to verify that you want to make the changes you're making before you completely commit them. So now we're going to come back here to Host Wizard. We're going to find our Juniper. We're going to select it. The first thing we need is our community name. So we're going to grab it and paste it in there. Next, it's going to ask for the host name. We'll say, and then it needs the IP. And then we will save it. And as you see here, there are a lot of checks that have come in. We're going to go ahead and run all of them. Then we're going to go back over to our dashboard and look at our list view. So unhandled service problems. Right there, demo Juniper. We have one that came up as failed right off the bat. So that's good we see the actual response that quick so any questions at this point all right Ken so one of the participants noticed that you're running this demo on a short uh, and then had a question is, can I run my own monitor server on Azure? Yes, you can run your own monitor server within Azure. Um, it, this is a simple install of CentOS 7 with a tarball install. So it's completely supported running any software that any platform that will run within Azure. In this case, you can use clients, you can use WMI within Windows, all of that within Azure. And you can install directly onto a Linux box within Azure. That's great. Thanks. And uh, for the Juniper switch, what do I need to open in the firewall to be able to run checks against a Juniper switch? The only thing that is required is SNMP access from your monitor server. So you would want to go through and configure your firewall to allow TCP and UDP 161 from the IP that your monitor server is running on. Right, thank you. Uh, so you added monitoring for a generic Windows server. Uh, it's, is there anything uh, built in that I can use to monitor other Microsoft servers? Yes, there is. So I've added a generic Windows check okay so let's take a look at this exact machine 
what you have here with NS client, we have our agent installed. And this gives us all the services specific to this. But let's say you had SQL on this box. In this case, I do. Instead of having to go back through the entire process of re-adding the host, these host groups, what a management pack does is directly link to a host group with a list of pre-configured checks that match that specific need. In this case, we're going to add a Microsoft SQL Server. And we're going to submit it and save it. And it's going to go through and add our SQL checks that we run against the host into it. And let's take a look and see what we have now. We have some that are coming through. Let's go ahead, speed up our check process, and submit it. So average disk youth link zero, services, SQL is running. I don't have any actual databases and I haven't configured all the authentication in, but this gives you an overview of what you will actually be seeing. You couldn't log in. There's no database present really. Oh, that's uh, great. Thanks, Ken. So for our uh, next question, if I prefer to go agentless, how can I monitor my servers? Okay, if you want to go agentless, we both we support both SNMP for Linux and WMI for Windows. Give me one second here. I need to pull up my user and password. All right, so there's a management pack for both of those actually. So we're going to come back to our host wizard. Next, we're going to start with Windows. We're going to find Windows Server via WMI. So I'm going to type my username. I could type, I would be doing even better, my password. Okay. Next, get my IP really quick. So, forty. Now, while we're on this screen, I want to cover something. You notice I haven't hit the add host button. What that does is, is it enables you to add numerous hosts at once. So it actually appends a host to the process as you're going through, which you could add 10, 15, or even 20 devices. You could also leverage our API to do this as well. All right, so here's our WMI checks. Let's force them. Typo somewhere. Ah, right there. Submit. Now, as you notice, I made a change there. The management pack wizard automatically commits a lot of the saves for you, but when you're directly editing a host, it will not apply until you run through the double save process. Check this again. And it's starting to come in. So there is WMI on Windows. For Linux, we can do the same thing, but for SNMP. So we'll come host wizard. Next. 
were fined. Out of the box, we support SNMPV3 for security reasons. So we'll come here. AES is. Yes. Again, remember me saying you have to select? I didn't select. So host name, host address, what is that? What is my demo? It's my P52, I believe. Oh, I can't remember the IP of the it. One second, I apologize, folks. 51 is the one I added. Okay, so yeah, 51 is correct. We'll save. And we'll run our checks again. By using the agent, the only authentication is required configuration is on the client side. You specify the source IPs you want to allow. Timeout. My machine is not wanting to play nice. Um, Michael, do you want to see if there's another question while I'm looking at this one little thing real quick? Yeah, sure. I thought that while you're uh, setting up the Linux server, I could also mention that uh, Microsoft Azure is not the only platform you can run on. Uh, we have uh, an image that you can start right off on AWS, Amazon's cloud service. Uh, and it's also possible to run on OpenStack and other cloud providers, of course. I do have one more question uh, when you're ready, Ken, and that's about graphs. Uh, okay. Do, if, uh, if the system generates graphs of like historical CPU usage and similar. Yes, it does. Um, hold on. All right. Yes, it does generate. And give me one second. We will go back over to that. Uh, Note to self, when you're configuring a machine, start the services. So now let's try this again. Come here, check the services.
And there we go. So there is your agent list. Now you had asked about graphs. So we're gonna to come to all services here. If you see this little icon right here, this actually starts generating your graphs. So let's find something that'll fluctuate. Like example, IPv4 sessions per second, you can see that it's already starting to process based on the sessions. Um, and flow sessions. So right there is the graphs that it generates as you're going. Great, thank you. It looks like we don't have any more questions. Uh, do you have anything you want to add, Ken? No. Uh, no, I think I kind of covered everything, including my failure to start services on the Linux machine. So, yeah, I think you did. Thanks a lot, Ken, and thanks everyone uh, for attending. A link to the recording of this webinar will be sent out to you within a few days, and you are welcome to share the recording with your colleagues. When you exit any meeting, there will be a survey. This is entirely optional, but we do appreciate if you take the time to give us feedback. Thanks again and have a nice day.